Hi, and welcome to WWFM Podcast. This is our very first episode, and our goal is to be the voice for workforce management, creating a platform for knowledge and new perspectives. So in this episode, the five of us, me, André, Doug, Gonzalo, Mr. B, and Kim, will be talking about our journey and what you can expect from us in the future. How is everyone feeling today? Good. I think we are great. Did you add, I'm ready to did you add nightmares into preparing for this first one? <laughs> I think, yeah, it, I absolutely did. And I was worrying as well about whether I was going to lose my voice because over the last week I've uh, had a bit of a cough. But uh, that's just me feeling sorry for myself. But yeah, it's definitely a new moment yeah. um, and, and, a, and a new a kind of new direction as well. So this is kind of exciting. But yes, yes, we made it. So be scared. I, I would say exciting is is definitely the the word because after such a long time preparing this, it's it's. I'm really happy that we finally started. So yes, excited. And and what a journey this was. Uh, Doug, you were the big responsible for all of us to be in this position, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, and if you think kind of like from my journey is. It's even longer in um, many regards because what this for me personally back in 2012 when I was out in Singapore and up until then I kind of had a bit of a career in workforce management um, with a few corporates in the UK and I was suddenly in, in a, in, out in uh, Southeast Asia and talking about kind of workforce management and they got it in the Philippines but the rest of Southeast Asia was like what's workforce management? Um, and um, at the time, I was uh, tasked with trying to build a consultancy practice for for uh, workforce management. So selling something that nobody knew what the hell it was. I was like, how do I, how do I get this across? And then at the same token, I'd always had this question from my parents where, like, what do you do for a job? And um, I was like, well, how do I get this? How do I sell this? How do I, how do I explain it? And uh, that's where I started with a, with a blog. And it really was just meant to be a couple of articles. And I put these out there going, oh, I wonder what people are going to think. Are they just going to laugh at me? Is it, is it going to be embarrassing? And then what now coming into to 21 and after that first article that went out to, to where I am now, where I've been since engaging with workforce management professionals across the world, finding massive amounts of passion for wanting to expand the, the profession and the career um, and entered into, into 21 in the middle of the pandemic going like, how do I kind of continue with this thought? How do I make it more real for people? And was approached by, by an organization uh, called the Global Workforce Management Forum, who were really interested. In, they, they had a big presence out in Asia, but really didn't have much of a presence in, in uh, Europe. And they were interested in kind of launching a chapter for, for this region. And uh, I agreed to do a couple of uh, webinars for them, searching around going, well, who'd be interesting to, to have there on that webinar to speak? Who do I need to, to have to help me? Because it's like, I'm on my own. And uh, this is where I, I, I came across, well, actually for, for um, Bill, Bill Ham, who is, is here in this podcast, for me, it was me reaching out on the Telegram group to him uh, and just going, is anybody willing to help? And I think it was, Bill Ham, you were the first to put your hand up. Yeah. By the way, just so people don't know what well, the Telegram group is something also that was created, part of a community to, to uh, engage and connect people from all around the world. It's got about 900 people in it. And it's one of these instant chat conversations where people can just branch off questions really quickly but that's for another time and then um Gonzalo who, who I've, I've worked with uh previously he had a really interesting he's got a really interesting career background where he's been involved in politics and he's great at speaking and kind of knows this stuff and he's like okay I'll give it a shot as well I'll give you a hand uh, and then finally um for, for Andre it was completely different Andre is you know very renowned in the European sector. He's he's taken things to whole new levels, which I'm really super interested in. 
as we kind of progress and get to know um, how workforce management can be deployed across an enterprise. Um, really interesting character. And, and I said, OK, look, I want to make Andre, along with some other really key figures, um, part of that webinar that, that I think a lot he's got a lot of things to say that people around the world would love to hear. Uh, and that webinar was a real, real success. It, it attracted, I think, over 200 people. Andre was kind of fielding tons of questions. And then after that, it was kind of like, well, what do we do now? And here we are. Um, we're doing a podcast. This is this is where we're at. Amazing. So let's let's take some step backs. So Bilan, how did Doug manage to get you on board with the idea? So we were kind of the first one volunteering. Can I cannot hear you. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. That's how the so, conversation went between me and Bilhan. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> like he well, couldn't he, he, he couldn't hear me and that's why he joined. He, he thought it was something completely different and he realized <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to please repeat the question because yes, I, expected, yes. I expected to hear that about my full name on Mr. B. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the problem. <laughs> yes, <I do. laughs> he, he said Sorry the name that. wrong. You had the, you had the anchor. Uh, let's let's move some step back. So, Bilhan, or I don't know if I should refer to you as Mr. B. Uh, how did Doug manage to get you on board with the idea? As I remember, um, first of all, I saw the uh, Doug Billock. Then, uh, as he mentioned, I was uh, I have been still member of this Telegram group. So for a while, I was thinking to be a part of the organization like WFM, but there's nothing in Kansas because I would like to share my knowledge and keep in touch with WFM colleagues internationally. So because I would like to track what's going on in industry and uh, how the people see and understand what is workforce management because being honest i have an interesting background i believe as a mathematician in WFM professions so i'm keen to put something into place related to uh, wfm and i believe that we have a shared passion with doc so we decided to do some things together i several times keep in touch with doc uh, for different reasons if i remember correct because one of my old colleagues inform me about uh, Doug's blog. So I closed the uh, follow up this blog, then being a member of this Telegram group. Then uh, we worked for this webinar together and we decided to do something which is not done yet in this industry. Actually, WFM covers all industries. So this is a tricky part and uh, it is not only related to contact centers. So we have a chance now to share our own knowledge with our all international colleagues all over the world with some different angles and interesting uh, people because we will host very interesting professionals who is related to WFM background. So this is how we, this is how I involved into this organization. And if I might say as well, Mr. B has been the most patient person with me getting his name wrong constantly, which is Everyone. where Mr. B comes from. Everyone, yeah. think, no one is going to be able to pronounce your name properly. I'm so sorry. We are so sorry <laughs> I, for I that. Still try. Come on, I come still on, try. please try together with me. It is Bilge. I still get it wrong. Bilge. Bilge. I, 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 <laughs> it's like half of it is missing. It's like Bilge. Bilge? Bilge. Yeah, Bilge. Oh, the rest is mute. Uh, no, actually, it's a short <laughs> version of my name. So it's not your Bilge. name, actually, anyway. It's a Bilge. I've been trying so hard my uh, all the entire time. Sorry for not, for not doing a good job. There, Mr. B. Uh, so, so Gonzalo, you were you were the next one to so join at the same time. How did you saw this project? First, uh, I saw the opportunity of working with with Doug. He was uh, he was my boss at the time, and even though I didn't know him for a long time, his passion for workforce management creates some kind of contagious effect and. When, when he told me about the project, I thought from the beginning that this is something that we could develop. As he mentioned before, even though workforce management brings a lot to the companies, not only productivity, not only engagement from people, but actually uh, can save resources, can improve their operation. Many people, even, even in the customer service business, which is sometimes impressive, are not very aware about the importance that we workforce management professionals can have in their companies. And 
I think, first of all, this happens because we somehow failed. Uh, we work uh, a lot to ourselves. We keep ourselves in a, some kind of shallow group of people. And the way how I saw this project was, okay, let's talk. Let's have good conversations, but not only for us, not only for workforce management professionals. Let's have conversations that my parents can hear. Uh, my friends can can actually understand. Let's let's bring professionals from workforce management, but not only. Let's bring people that can lead the person who is listening to understand better not only what we do, but what we can bring to the to their companies and to their industries. Um, so this is how I see this this project, and. I really feel privileged because I had the chance to, to start this with, with you guys. And yeah, basically, that's, that's, that's how I see it. I see it uh, a diamond with a lot of potential. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Gonzalo. It's, it's, it's interesting that, that you have been motivating people uh, from so many angles through your initial community just to try to explain to your fathers. What yeah, it's, it's, it was like they never expected this, um, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, there was me being seriously worried about, well, they're just going to be laughed at. So, uh, yeah, seriously? It's, it's definitely a journey. Yeah. Why? Um, because, because it, you know, everyone has um, an element of imposter syndrome in them. Yeah. Everyone does. You know, I was still fairly early on in my career. And the reason I... You know, another motivating thing that for me around that, that blog and also getting information out was that so much of the content that was available online was only provided by technology providers. Mm -hmm. And there's always a suspicion that actually, to be fair, a lot of the technology providers provide some really, really good quality mm -hmm. content. You know, don't get me wrong on this, but you also got this kind of thought that, yeah, they've got an agenda behind it. They're selling some software. So can I really believe this? And the problem with workforce management is that there isn't a there isn't like a course that you can do with university necessarily. There's yeah. really some things now starting to work in that direction. But at the time there was nothing like that. There was no kind of core profession. You didn't wake up after university and go, I'm gonna be a workforce management profession. You were saying that still it's hard to explain what it is, right? To most yeah. people. So. <laughs> um so so when I put that article out there, it was like Ugh. This is my version of it. There could be a million other versions of it. Is it really going to be something somebody generally interested in, or is it just me? Mm. That's that's why we are here, I would say. So, and, and, and throughout this journey, I think later uh, I got to the party uh, through you, Doug, one more time. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think when our first contact. I can't even remember why. It must have been something like, I think I sent you some random LinkedIn message long, long time before all of this, right? And, um, yeah. and I think, and then and I think you kind of went, oh, actually, I'd like to speak to you. I actually think you tried to hire me, actually, Andre, thinking about it. I think at the time you yeah. were looking for, a, you were looking for somebody and I was like, no, I don't want to go to Portugal. Ah, okay. Um, I thought he didn't like you and you were like, no, you're going to do no, something maybe, with me to see maybe, how good maybe, I am. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but I also like, that part. Oh, okay, maybe I've made that up in my mind. <laughs> uh, but, it, but you went into this, ah, oh, Kind of like out of in Europe, the workforce management is not really well known. I've been thinking about kind of doing some sort of like events. I think at the time it was like face to face type stuff, conferences and stuff. I went, mm, okay, cool. And then for me, it was like, well, in the UK, that's actually that, that exists. It was existing quite a lot. I was like, so I couldn't quite figure why Andre was interested in doing something out in Europe because mm -hmm. I didn't understand the differences. Mm. And then what? Andre and I didn't probably speak to each other again yeah. after that for a few years. I think the timing um, was really off because I think it we the first time we spoke was like one two months before the pandemic hit, and at yeah. the time the vision was to do something completely different. Yeah, um, my my view was to doing like events, but like more kind of like problem solving events, getting to actually solve meaningful things and like can we can we change? Can we inspire people to do things? Yeah. differently? that was kind of like the view. And I, I don't recall that part of the message, but there was a point in time that probably I was like, mm, yeah, I like this profile. Let's see. Let's see if I have something. Uh, uh, I, I was just probably trying track, to but... put my ego up there to say, yeah, but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I can, I can say yes, if you want. 
can see yes if you <laughs> but we did what, what, what we did have was a connection at that point um yeah. around kind of a shared vision for trying to evangelize workforce management and it, it stuck in my brain and then when this whole uh, webinar type thing came up with uh with, with the gwfm i was like who would be a really interesting person to speak um who would I guess you know through that interaction and that trigger and also the fact that kind of looking at your profile and what you've done with you know far-fetched and taking workforce management beyond just the boundaries of building a capacity plan but entwining it so integrally within the business i was like wow this actually this would be a really cool person to have and speak and i think he's got a lot to say that people would be really interested in hearing um which is when i reached out again to kind of like say would you be interested? And in, you were apparently you like speaking, Andre. So um... I do, I do, and and I think that that connects quite well because it's hard to find, at least from my perception, people that have that vision of like not only trying to do something but really how do we connect people um, mm -hmm. and how do we connect knowledge around this subject in a way that is passionate, but people really feel the value. Like there is so much that can be done. Like mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I don't recall who said it, I think Mr. B said it around. There are so many different industries calling it different names, but in the end mm. of the day, we are all working for that same goal. Um, and that was always something that struck me. It's like, how can I make it more meaningful, more connected to different areas of the business? Because in the end of the day, we are in that sweet spot between HR, finance, business, and, and we want to be the wheel for all, for everyone to move. Um, and it, it's not the easy place for you to find your own uh, identity. It's like you try, you struggle, or like who I am, uh, like am I HR, am I business, am I finance? Like what role do I play? And at the end of the day, I mean, you are what you are. And I think with the LFM, we are trying to bring that voice uh, upwards. That's that's. I mean, you didn't have to convince me much. I think when you called me and you said like, "Oh, would you be interested in doing this and this and that?" I was like, "Yeah, totally." <laughs> that's something I have been trying to find so i got lucky i have to say connecting with you and same. it was all through your community most most of it same same and then and, and i guess then kind of like we start trying to figure out how to make this happen it's not so easy to to make a podcast i thought it was going to be like uh <sighs> easy actually easier to do a webinar right I, that, that's what i'm finding yep way wow. much easier i think i think we have so many hours of ideation on this subject like thinking around like what's the next idea how do we do it differently of which um, andre you've been in your car for about 90 percent of it like like my uh, second office second office my second office yeah and, then and, and, and i think uh sorry again i think when we were in that moment of generating ideas i think what what I think I, I think Gonzalo was the first one to bring it. It's like we, we were too technical, uh, trying to figure out like how do we what what is really missing, uh, and I, and I think what was really missing was that creative spark. Uh, like how do we after we got to the podcast, like we were just like what's next? And now we are frozen. How do we move? True, Which yeah. led to 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 Kim uh, joining the group, and Gonzalo was definitely the big force behind it. For to join the the group and, and Kim, what did you saw on us? The four of us trying to do something. So first, it's interesting that uh, like uh, I, I was not coming in from from Doug's side, huh? <laughs> it was uh, Gonzalo exactly? Uh, Gonzalo brought me in, talked about the project, talked also a lot about you guys and what you were trying to do as well. Gonzalo is actually the first person that I also know that works in uh, workforce management, and actually it was a little bit hard to understand what he was doing also in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. It's like try to explain, but it's like have. It has so many variables and variants as like like you were saying the whole time it's like it's a little bit hard to identify it properly in the company space mm. so it was like during the, this time uh also being or hearing about him what he's doing what's not and the importance of it that i also noticed <laughs> in my <laughs> field that uh it doesn't depend where you are working or who you're working if the companies are small or big the problems are always there and it's really needed something like you what you are doing guys that's why it's growing also so much and it's super interesting and honestly I, I wanted a new challenge that doesn't have anything to do well it has to do with what I do but I never did something like this as well and talking to you guys because you are so 
easygoing as well. It's like super nice to talk to you guys as well. And although you're very technical, I think we can still understand what we are doing and talking about. <laughs> you look at, we look at you as the, the technical person. <laughs> yeah, technical in that sense, but not technical about the, the, the subjects. Yeah, so talking to you guys, it was like the passion that you brought into trying to explain what you were doing and that was like instantly sold. I was like, yeah, working with these guys the way that they want to do it, it's impossible to say no. You are really trying to do something and you can feel the energy that you are putting into. And honestly, after we are starting now doing this, I think everyone is going to have the motivation also up. I yeah. think, yeah, yeah. this is the it's, push. It's like the... the, the like the mountain but the, yeah. you, you don't know whether you can really climb so you just go around it instead exactly um but once you start climbing the mountain you kind of no choice but to continue yeah uh, now we are all obliged to go with it because it's official super happy and excited about that actually <laughs> i think everyone is i can see for your faces <laughs> no one is Definitely. going to see because it's just going to be audio but everyone is smiling a lot so it's a good <laughs> thing <laughs> That's, that's very true. So the question that I think we have been trying to answer is what can everyone expect from us? Um, and I think that's the question. I think it's our value proposition. So who wants to start here? Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a crack. I think the, for me, the, the thing that I think that we can really provide is, is, is the stories behind the spreadsheet, the stories behind the, 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 that brought people to, to kind of the workforce from profession, but also a better understanding of it and just what it can do in terms of, we are, I think we're only just scratching the surface of what's possible um, in, in terms of how workforce management can be entwined within a business and really take it to kind of be the glue between so many different functions, um, link strategy to, to tactical action brings uh, insight where it's kind of a black art right now, um, entwines technology. And, and, I, and I think as, as well, we, we want to be the glue itself um, in the, we want to be that integration between say some really great forums out there that are providing good education to workforce management professionals, um, linking them with, with, with technology, uh, educating technology on, on what workforce management professionals need. But all on, on the same time, providing workforce management professionals the insights into what technology can bring them, not being afraid of that, but embracing it, and and also like um, being along the journey around how workforce management itself is evolving. So the the days of you know when I first started, where you were kind of just sat behind a spreadsheet, but you didn't have a lot of engagement with the business, I think is very different to where I am twenty years on where now you have to be uh, a master of many different, um, well, you have to wear a lot of different hats, ability to communicate, be analytical, engaging, understanding, growth mindset. These are the qualities of a really great workforce management professionals. And I think for me, if we can bring that story to, to the rest and help others to, to be along on the same journey, that would be a, a, that's a big tick for me. But also in a way that the people that are not so involved in it, right? Because I also the goal is also like to get the people yeah. from outside first having a good time as well. That it's yeah. not such a technical <laughs> podcast, and also trying to bring the knowledge of what it is and what it means to, let's say, the people outside. But, it's also crucial to, that everyone understands what it is about, not only between like you guys in the industry but also to bring the people from outside into it and understand the importance and the need of it as well yeah focus. it's almost like a, a full cycle for me so yeah. i start, started off doing that because of that in the in the uk and the in and, the, and, uh, and america um and in arguably in the netherlands as well i think it's pretty well established uh, like you look at the netherlands for example the, you know it's quite a lot of uh, healthcare sector use workforce management principles. That's right. Um, uh, and in the UK, you won't find an organization that has a contact center that doesn't have a workforce management team. But that isn't what I'm finding to be the case in other European countries. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm scratching my head to, to understand why, um, which is why I was so, kind of really so pleased to kind of come across Andre, for example, because he's somebody that had really made it work. Um, and I was like, I don't know, Andre, what did you do differently to, what does it mean to you to be here? And what did you do differently to kind of bring it to life? Yeah. I think in in my view, and that's a great question, is if we look back at, at the industry, I think how much have it changed over the last 10, 20 years? It's, it's not much. It's like I learned the way things were done at the same time by observation. Uh, that's the way I was taught. Uh, over time, you've kind of developed skills and there are kind of like a few nuances as the technology was evolving. But I mean, if you look at the old guys like Avai or things like that, they stayed in business for such a long time in the same processes, same way. Uh, and I think what struck me is what this will be in 10 years from now uh, and can't be the same. It cannot be the same. It needs to be, it needs to evolve. And that's what I try to do. I try to look at from the more traditional aspects of, of the WFM into what I feel that uh, the WFM should be from way more uh, a, a step into, fi into finance, into return investment. How can we be advocates for change? Um, and at the same time, be part of the decision in facilitating different business decisions uh, with numbers, with the impact. Uh, so everyone is aware of like, when I'm making a call to stop or start, a different project or initiative. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know that I might need more resources. I know that will impact cost in X, Y, or Z. And I think having that story and back to the story, I think that's what I've been trying to do. And I think over time, and I think this podcast will be a good a good platform for it, for it, is bringing voices of people that are innovating in the space and trying to do things the way that probably if you look at companies that are smaller and more traditional, they don't see it yet, they need it. Uh, but I, I hope that we can showcase a bit of what can be done and how different how different these professionals can be and the value they can add that's that's kind of like my my take on this i'm gonna get his name wrong i'm gonna give it another crack but with a hand no no not quite mr b but like All right. for, for you for you did you know in turkey for because you in turkey is workforce manager understood is it is it some is it a thing i've never asked that you that question actually so I'm yeah, quite, actually it is not on the level that as as should be and most of industries have not yet understand the importance of the workforce management even if it is based on only one mathematical theory for any industry it, and i believe that it's not a rocket science um there, there should be some collaboration um between uh, wfm colleagues to share their knowledge to explain especially we saw this uh, the, I mean, the importance of WFM recently, for last two years, more than before. So to bring this sharing knowledge uh, or experiences from different angles by having fun, because our aim is always to have fun, first of all, and explain <clears throat> the importance of the WFM, uh, even it doesn't look like a rocket science for some of people, let me try to explain what we are doing, why we are doing, how we are doing. It looks like complicated as you try to explain because we cannot uh, say easily uh, what we are doing in one word. So, but it is also an important role. And our aim, I think, should be more creating a bridge role between the countries in the EMEA region or the industries, uh, including the WFM professionals from all industries, not only for contact centers. So I believe that we will fill this gap uh, with this WFM podcast because there is none uh, at that moment. And I hope the people uh, would like to listen uh, because it will not include only the technical details or it will not only focus on the contact centers. It is, it, it should include all the WFM circle. And, you know, there are some well-known questions uh, recently what is the meaning uh, of the workforce uh, for the um, recent years uh, after this pandemic situation, for example? Because everyone would like to understand how you manage that situation for your organization or another one, how they create an appropriate action uh, to avoid the damage to their uh, organization. But we will also discuss, I believe, uh, the other parts, which is only specifically for the workforce professionals, like recruitment it looks like so easy 
uh, or when you, you know, when you hear that it is yeah, just a free but it is really important uh, for the WFM professions, I think, after this uh, recent uh, years as well. I'm not mentioning about the recruitment in WFM cycle, just something else. And I believe our WFM colleagues would like to listen to these different uh, stories from our hosts, because uh, even they will not be maybe WFM professional, they will bring us to different knowledge and experiences that we can use for any other industry, company, or country as well. So this is the our passion uh, why we're having fun. Great. I think we see that that's definitely why we are here. Gonzalo, what's your take on this one? What people can expect from us? Well, I I strongly believe that to to be a good developer professional, you need to to like people. You need to you need to understand human nature and to to like what is behind all of these numbers and and graphics and, and tools. So what, what I expect to bring in this project is what is behind the, the names, so people's experience, uh, uh, not only how uh, they, they arrive to WFM, but their life experience, uh, what motivate them to engage in this job, and, um, but also to, to explore all the human side of the professionals. Because the feeling I have is, we know the, the experience, uh, the professional experience of every single person. Uh, it's very easy. You go to LinkedIn, you check, you see what they did, where they were working, but we don't know much about their personal uh, uh, path uh, and what lead them to, to this and what they expect uh, to to WFM to be in the future. So uh, it, it, I think it becomes difficult to uh, uh, say much more uh, than what Doug and you guys said, but uh, I, I truly believe we'll bring more humane perspective of WFM uh, that people are not used to. Thank you. Um, and I think this is it. Uh, this is what you can expect from with WFM. So stay in touch. Uh, we'll be releasing a new episode every two weeks with a special guest uh, where we'll be speaking about like Gonzalo just described, personal experiences, careers, debating business and industry trends. Um, hope you have enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you for listening to WFM. This podcast is made and produced by André Leitão, Bilga Hentelon, Doug Carsten, Gonzalo Gomes and Kim Paz. If you like this show, don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues. Visit our website, wfm.com, to find more exclusive interviews and WFM content. See you next time. All rights reserved.